Don't nod, guys. Oh. Well, well, hello, hi, and welcome to your new favorite podcast. That's right. Oh, oh, this is our first episode, but like, welcome to a new episode of In the Woods. In the Woods. In the Woods. And uh, just I'm James. Mm, you are, and I am Mirette, Mirette, but you can call me Thunderkant. What? Um, what? Straight I mean, out of the bat. Come on. Yeah. I'm coming out swinging. No, you can call me Mirre. Good Lord. Yeah, well, that's just a taste of what's to come. Well, mm -hmm. you know, if anyone was shocked... That's out of the... They're no longer listening. <laughs> well, now they are tuning in. Because, yeah. Uh, so, what's this? So, what's the agenda? The agenda is... Um, Besides 21. 20. 21. I was thinking more like 42, but whatever. It's double. It's a, it's double digits, baby. Uh, well, it's a podcast uh, about anything and everything paranormal, weird, fringe, um, just weird stuff that makes us think and discuss. Uh, and like, if we do it off air we might as well do it on air like a podcast <laughs> because everyone was listening in anyway and you love this stuff like you listen to so many podcasts i do like all day every day all day every day baby and i i hear the um I'm you know, i eat excerpts <laughs> you know excerpts. sometimes i get sucked in mm -hmm. and i end up listening to the whole thing other times i just yeah. put your headphones on. Go do my own thing. But yes, there's some very fascinating stuff. I know. And it's a lot of things that I have always been, or I'd say more so used to be interested in. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I won't be interested again, but I don't know. It just has fallen off the wayside for me a little in recent years. Well, you know, it's it's a lot of stuff you already know, but it's always interesting to like hear other people's take on it. <clears throat> and it's a whole world too. Like you, you kind of need to devote a lot of time to it so it's mm -hmm. it's i don't see it really as a thing you can just dip your toes in into because you no. you, you need like you dive in you first, dive in really and all of a sudden you're ball steep in that rabbit hole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well yeah we've got to go something into a rabbit hole why not why not balls first yeah balls first yeah uh, yeah but like for me it kind of comes and goes like I'm um, super into UFOs and then it kind of like fades away and then I'm all about the Illuminati and stuff. Oh, okay. And then my brain gets all scrambled by that. And I just need to like watch a bunch of YouTube clips of kittens and <laughs> slots and stuff. Well, that's, that's why you know, people get, like on Facebook and social media, people get, um, well... well Silly people get mm -hmm. frustrated over saturation of, oh, he's he's a photo of my food or my cats. Oh, there's pictures of funny cats again. But it's kind of like in between courses and meals, mm -hmm. it's like a slice of cucumber. You know, you need to clean the palate. Okay. Refresh yourself. R refresh yourself Bef before you before, wreck yourself. Or before you re-wreck yourself. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> be, yeah, be, because you know the the rubber hole is deep, and you're gonna. Um, yeah, and it's like once you know these things, you can you can't unknow them. It's like, and you dedicate so much time to it as well because there is so much 
disinfo and bullshit out there. Yeah. You like, there's so many, there's clearly so much, like, rubbish and fake stuff. And people's like, well, how do you know the difference? Because it all seems so far fetched. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, well, you get an idea. And you learn through the years to, like, see through. And, uh, but it's. And I find, I found myself becoming more skeptical again, mm-hmm. which is probably a good thing. For, and some friends might agree it's a good thing for, for now. But, um,. I don't know if it's just my go-to reaction now. Like, pff, come on. You always need a, a help. Yeah. Um, you do. You, yeah. It's a freezer. It kicks in every now and then. It's a lie. It likes to drip the power. Got nowhere else to put it. Uh, uh, yeah, a healthy dose of criticism. Or just like, you can't just eat everything up. You know, some, you have to use your brain. And also what resonates with your hard and core whatever your floats or goat well she goat well i think that's just part of once you've been balls deep in the rabbit holes Mm -hmm. for so long Mm -hmm. you'll you know you'll see certain things recurring or not synchronicities but you know i think you start to be able to judge Mm -hmm. what is what is bollocks and what is and also even if it doesn't have credence to it like something that I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that's taken over lately. I'm not even going to mention it by name because it just makes my eyes roll so Mm -hmm. much they hurt. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's circling in the last year or two Mm -hmm. that's come to the forefront again. Um, Not again, but come to the forefront and kind of taken over this whole conspiracy truth, if you want to call it truth movement or um, paranormal and kind of stuff. And And I'm just like... I don't know. I don't know if it's just to divide people and put more um, Mm -hmm. false, you know, stuff out there. What comes to my mind is divide and conquer. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can see that Mm -hmm. happening with everything. Yeah, and that's sad because it should just be the opposite. But, yeah. And also, the most important thing that I try to always remember is what's my my truth isn't necessarily... your truth I don't mean you but like people in general mm-hmm. <clears throat> so um, yeah I don't think like you can tell people they're wrong or right just mind your own beeswax we and, can sometimes it's fun yeah because we like to You're judge wrong. people yeah because pe- humans uh. are morons but as long as just don't be a dick don't be a dick. Well, Just it's, it's take the, the dick, <laughs> suck the dick, but don't be a dick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and sometimes I think too, like, okay, divide and conquer, and the whole the whole idea is to come together, but right now, all over my face. No, no, but um, Ooh. but 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 you know, everyone's so different. And half the time you can't even stand people or large crowds for any amount of time. So do we really need to come together? No. I just like... I don't want to be with those people or like any people. I just want to (laughs) chill in my house and around my hood and... Yeah. I just want to be with you and my mom. A nice quiet life and the cats (laughs) and and the the forest. Yes. And And maybe one or two of the neighbours. A few podcasts. Mm -hmm. Some books. Mm -hmm. Some TV shows occasionally. Yeah. And just make... Our own little universe out here. That's what it's about. Because the world is fucked. Making now universe. Yes. Yes. And the end is nigh stuff, so... <sighs> People have been saying that for, sure, for years, though. Yeah. It's been that, like... It, all the time and all the ages and all the humans, he's always like, the end is nigh. Oh, no, you invented it, the wheel. The end is nigh. <laughs> where where do we go mm. from here? First the fire, now the wheel. You could have burned the house down. Oh, the world is fucked. Where are we heading? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Transhumanism. Oh snap! Just throwing topics out there. D- just actually. Because you've listened to so many things, that you <clears> might, <throat> I could probably just throw some topics out there and you oh, can of course, talk on them. Yeah, in uh, a decent. <laughs> In a friendly manner, because we still at need length. to be sleeping in the same bed and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kid, I kid, I love it. No, we don't have to. 
We well, keep, we keep. We don't have to sleep in the same bed. Well, I, what if I want to? But that's not the topic. What? Let's just back to transhumanism. Yeah. Uh, I don't know much about. I know what it is and like the gist of it and stuff. But I haven't because it doesn't. I'm not that interested in it. People being because I kind of like robots. It's cool. <laughs> and I mean, if people want to be robots, that's cool. It's cool. As well, long as they're not dicks. But what about is it the whole kind of, uh, you know, Terminator? I've got, I've completely forgotten. What's the name of the company again? Oh, Skynet. Yes. Isn't there actually a company called yes. Skynet now? It's like yes. a self-fulfilling prop- mm-hmm. prophecy. It's like okay, it didn't exist before, but now that you've seen it in a movie and the fear has been planted, mm-hmm. let's create that shit. Yeah, and just like, oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> but, but what about the whole idea that uh, you know the whole tech aspect is we well, can see it in a couple of different terms in terms of well both terms are control but one is I guess a Gattaca type future with mm-hmm. genetics and maybe mm-hmm. um, only people oh, but yeah and only people who can afford these little transhuman upgrades and uh, well, can you know uh, other other elite or fancy people sip in their um, cyber cafe? Yeah, well, you know, there. I think there is always going to be something. Or if it's all technological and then it's all hooked in somewhere to a mainframe, or they're controlling everything like via microchips. You know, the chip. You're all being chipped. It's the mark of the beast. Well, then they can control it somewhere they remotely. They already started with the animals. What? They're shipping animals. Oh, for that some kind of thing. Well, I mean, that's yeah, on farms, well, not just wild, not all wildlife. Though. No, unless well, they're it in, unless they're on. endangered and yeah. keeping a track of numbers. Um. So, like, everyone thinks it's super good. I mean, if it tracks all the animals, humans should have it too, like all the kids and stuff. I, or just don't have kids. Yeah. Please. Please, don't destroy it for the rest of us <laughs> that made a sound judgment to not have. Oh, sound? Yeah, any people. <laughs> uh, well, I like transhumanism. I actually I couldn't care less. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. If well, there is uh, stuff that can make people, you know, like people with disabilities, yeah. that's all good. Like prosthetic limbs, things like mm-hmm. that. If it's something. Bionic. Yeah, neurological pathways. Mm-hmm. Oh, like. Can, it's not like a. Like, I mean, TV shows and movies show this kind of idea and thing all the time. Like, mm-hmm. even in Arrow, for example, where mm-hmm. uh, Felicity gets a chip at the base of her <gasps> spine that helps her walk again. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you know, things like that. Obviously, that is beneficial and kind of uh, extremely progressive in mankind's achievements. Yeah. But it's like with every good invention, I guess, there's always the dicks that's going to like make it into something bad. Use it for evil purposes. Evil pur- to take over the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Uh, but this is like years ago already. They can put in some kind of like electronic stuff in the brain of people with epilepsy. So like severe cases. So Mm -hmm. when they get a fit or something, um, it kind of like jump starts or like neutralize. I don't know. Can't just smoke weed. Well, <laughs> you can. Probably cure and help a lot of things. It, I mean, I have heard the kids are doing that nowadays, but I wouldn't know anything about it. Yeah, I don't know what it is, really. What is it? There, It's some kind of grass, What just, from what I've been told. Just, it just grows on lawns and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't see the big deal about it. Sounds good. Maybe we should. We all try eating grass when we're kids, with not oh, I know. Maggots and grass. and Maggots? Well, not me personally, but I know a guy. 
<laughs> I know a guy who knows a guy who has a sister that has a cousin that has a dog. So yeah. And a dog had its own poop. It did. Probably had maggots in it. Probably. At least worms. Yeah. Very least. Yeah. Okay. Did you know actually, like in Mexico, uh -oh. you can buy drinks with worms in it? To, mezcal. Yeah, Mexico. No, Probably. but mez mezcal and no, 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 tequilas. No, it's like with, when you get worms, like because mm -hmm. you get thin of it because, you know, yeah. like with mm -hmm. cats, when they have worms, they eat yeah. and eat and eat, but yeah. they kind of just like get skinnier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for people. So purposely yes. giving yourself worms. And then some kind of antidote or whatever, so you poop the worm out again. I know. You know the opera singer Maria Callas? No. No, I do. <laughs> well, I, I only know this. Okay. Uh, she used to do that when she had like a big performance to do. So she like... Lost, worms. Yeah. And she lost like 10 kilos in one week or something weird. Jesus. So she would fit in her gala dress or whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. True story. You can Google that shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's the name again? Maria Callas. Maria as it's spelled, spelled. universally. Yeah. And the last name is C-A-L-L-A-S. Hmm. Callas. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Little tidbit. Right. FF, fun fact. Fun fact. Mm. Well, uh, before we move on to any other topics, because mm -hmm. you suggested doing this um, mm -hmm. as a kind of introduction to mm -hmm. us starting on our first episode, yes. mm -hmm. and I don't want it to meander too long in case people might lose interest other than oh. hearing our lovely voices. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you wanted to say, like, introduce... We'll talk about how we got into these topics oh. as, as, a, as a matter of interest. Okay. Or, so a little or some introduction. Other... Who am I? How did I get here? Who's your daddy? And what does Who's he do? Who's your daddy? Be I was going to say I'm your daddy, but that, yeah, no. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my name is Mirra, and uh, I'm Swedish, and I'm... Uh, living outside of Gothenburg, Göteborg, in the woods, and um, I'm 34. I know it's mind-bending, and it's a topic in itself, um, but I, I always been interested in this kind of stuff, uh, but it wasn't until, like, I went, I started, like, the Swedish seventh grade or maybe even when i went to sixth grade when i was maybe like 12 13 you know when you start to think by yourself and like the world what's happening i need to know stuff mm -hmm. so i like read at the library read all their books on like paranormal ufos weird shit and stuff and um yeah i was just fascinated um yeah, but it's like I I read about it, so I kind of like loaded my data bank in my brain, but I really didn't do anything about it because I didn't have any to talk about this. So there with. was no, like obviously grandparents weren't into this kind of thing. Yeah. No friends at school or no. parents around? No, because like the way I was brought up in, I grew up with my grandparents, my maternal grandparents and they are very fundamentalist Christians let us say so all this kind of stuff is is demonic it's mm -hmm. from the devil blah 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 so I kind of had to do it on the DL so nobody knew because uh, yeah so yeah I can had to keep it for myself and when was the first time you got to discuss it with anyone, or that you met someone like-minded? Um... Well, I guess the interwebs, because I got internet like 96, 97. Pretty early. That's, oh, it's like, what, 20 years? Yeah. Jesus. And it's like the dial-up, you yeah. know, on the phone. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and, um, like, 
back then. Like, not even the biggest newspapers in Sweden had a homepage. Like, nobody had a webpage. Just, like, dubious people with yeah. very weird interests. Yep. Well, that was the, um, I mean, before the big dot-com kind of boom. Yeah. Because because of that reason, people, random, you know, tech geeks who mm-hmm. knew how to exploit, yeah. bought up all the domains yeah. for big companies. And uh, I should have done that. If we had that forethought, if mm-hmm. we went back in time, we could could do something like yes. that. Let's when that. Im- Let's meet here last Wednesday. Oh yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Um. Yeah. So um. And you know, like the IRC chats and stuff. Old school. Mm, old school. See, I re- I mean I remember some of that stuff, but I was. A relative latecomer to not using the internet, but like having it at home, mm-hmm. so using it regularly. That there was so much stuff that I didn't know, and I had to ask like mates when I was in my twenties. Oh, you know, like I was in my twenties before I uh, had a computer at home connected to the internet. Wow. Yeah, like That's... I had to. Yeah, you know, when I was at uni, the first time I was at uni, I had to either go to the library and sit in there all afternoon wow. doing assignments or use my typewriter at home. I had a typewriter too. So let's just say most of my assignments were typewritten. <laughs> yeah, but like I used to write novels and short stories and poems and shit. And because my granddad worked like as a technician mm. um, and um, um, sometimes even built those things so sometimes um, he brought home stuff for me cool. so I had I had a regular clunky one and I had like an electrical the electric my mom's like so cool yeah, very nice. yeah very nice very nice so yeah hmm so, well it's not, I think that's funny because I when I think back I feel like I always had an interest in this stuff as well because obviously there's people who have a natural inclination if yeah, they're going to find the way their way you to were it brought up. well too but the thing is like i can say with the things that i was surrounded by or that my mum was interested in for example mm-hmm. some of that didn't come until i was a teenager in like you know hmm. 15 or something but before that like she always had an interest in uh egyptian mm. art and stuff so there was Oh, she had a lot of frame prints and statues and things like that around the house from as, as far back as I can remember. So I was always interested in, I guess, uh, history, which I was always really good at, and archaeology from mm. a young age. Mm. And then I guess as I got a bit older, and maybe it's at those years when you start trying to discover things on your mm. own, like... You know, besides reading comics and the general interest in mythology, I would read books and stuff, you know. Mm. And I don't know where the interest came from, but I would... I remember some of the first books I ever bought that um, that weren't, you know, expanded universe Star Wars novels or comics were mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, Nostradamus prophecies Ooh, or yes. books on Atlantis, you know. Mm-hmm. And Atlantis, I guess, for me, was one of the things... You know, and, and sometimes I didn't even think... Like, when I read the book on Nostradamus, for example, mm-hmm. I wouldn't even say I necessarily at the time understood it or really knew what it meant, but it was this idea and, I guess, some mystery surrounding mm-hmm. the way people always spoke about it. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of laughable in a sense now. I'm not, you know, or maybe it's gone in waves. Like at the time, for some reason, maybe it's synchronicities. Like things and topics and uh, will come into your life all the time. Like you'll notice things. Mm-hmm. My mum, my mum would always say, "Oh, it's uh, look for things to appear in threes mm-hmm. as a as a reminder that That's you know." True. But I would, I would. I'd never notice a third time, but I'd see it twice very close together. It'd make me go, whoa, 
you know, mind blown kind of thing. Which, Actually, I can yeah. confirm the three stuff mm -hmm. because uh, when I worked as a night nurse, or like just a nurse way back when I could work, <coughs> uh, when people passed away, yeah. Uh, in the I don't know living facilities is old old folks home yeah, yeah. dimension and shit. They were they always died in three, hmm. and like when if one would pass away, you could be sure two more. It's like it, like clockwork. That's all. So, you just like went around waiting for the next two to die basically yeah so it happened a lot of times i worked there for five years mm -hmm. it happened at least like three times three times three well, three times three times three times three times yeah and like i didn't believe it at first i was like yeah whatever yeah but it's true <laughs> and it was well i mean is this i guess it's a it's probably a some brain mental phenomena um when they talk about it you know where obviously if you've heard you know like i'll use the nostradamus example again you mm -hmm. know you've heard the name nostradamus mm -hmm. then there might have been like some special on tv one week you know one night during the week there's some special on mm -hmm. about his prophecies and it's one of those super old school 80s pre-ancient aliens type shows that mm -hmm. would come on like if you ever saw the really like it's bad in hindsight but at the time it was huge the when they did a tv movie special of um like von daniken's chariots of the gods oh. and they just showed all but this. i remember reading his books when i was a teenager yeah and um yeah so then you see that then you see the episode on tv mm-hmm and then when you walk into a bookstore, mm -hmm. like you're not necessarily looking for it, but it just pops out straight mm -hmm. away. It's like sitting right there yep. on display. And you're like, more well, obviously I'm meant to buy this. Yeah, true. And that would happen for heaps of things. I mean, it happened, I guess, where, um, not necessarily the rabbit hole began. But it but could where, be also the littlest things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just a little quick tangent and mm -hmm. um one another example once is in like 2008 i was doing a road trip up the east coast of australia mm -hmm. and like along the way i'd stopped at record stores and city in sydney and other places and um bought a bunch of stuff and i bought some uh extra cds for the drive up just so i knew music to listen to mm -hmm. and at the time i had um the latest my morning jacket album Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the name of the song, but I'm driving through Byron Bay. There is this song on where the lyric says like something like, um, you know, I have no idea where I'm going, oh. which I thought was apt in itself because mm -hmm. I was, you know, not in a daze, but kind of like floating along with the music and had the windows down. It was a nice, you know, nice day and listening to the lyrics intently and then up over the crest of this hill comes this old school bus that someone had obviously bought and decked out. Ooh. And on the destination thing, it said, no idea. <gasps> and I just, I, I, it was another mind blown moment. I was literally hands on the steering wheel, just going, Whoa! what the fuck? Pretty much. Yeah. And I was, and it was I mean, amazing. I thought like when shit like that happens. Mm -hmm. So back to, I guess Atlantis and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, for some reason, that was a topic that I knew was kind of probably a fantasy, but was always a topic of interest for me. And I read this book around 98, mm -hmm. I guess. And in the book, when I was talking about other alternative ideas for how our history, it mentions Zachariah Sitchin's name. Oh. And for some reason, at this point in time, like, in the past, I had, around that similar time, actually, before that Atlantis book I'd read, I read one of my mum's books called The Mayan Prophecies. Oh. So that's when all that kind of began. So there was mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff, and that book was published mid-90s or even late 80s. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that was one of the first that kind of kicked off this wave of all the mind prophecy mm. and 2012 mm. bullshit books. But by the way, did you, uh, like, what did you think?